What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. In this week's episode, we're at week seven of the NFL, deep into the fancy football season. But listen, if you're panicking, if you're in a losing record, don't worry. We have some tricks for you to help you going into week seven. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to J. Ruth Gaming. Connor, hello. How are you, sir? Good, good. What's going on? Repping, yeah. repping your Phillies. Repping, repping your Phillies, Phillies. Yeah, yeah, game one. Next tonight. round, yep. next round. Yep. Yeah, we're shooting this early. We're shooting this on, what, Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. So the day before. Yeah. So a lot of our stuff that we're talking about for week seven of the fantasy football, there's some reports that are just simply not out yet, but yeah. we like shooting this early um, in the week so you guys get it. So week seven, week six was, uh, wasn't, it was interesting. It was yeah, a lot I mean, of uh, like upsets. Yeah, for weird. sure. I mean, the Cardinals lose not only the game but Hollywood Brown and a vital offensive lineman. Right. Bucks lose to the Steelers practice squad secondary, which is uh, alarming for the Bucks probably. Um, weird, just a weird it week all weird, around. It, it was Matt weird. Ryan's got some stuff figured out in Indianapolis. Yeah, it looks like yeah. it scored a touchdown. It scored yeah. a touchdown. Yeah, it yeah. was, and the Eagles are still undefeated. And the Eagles are undefeated. So listen, week seven, a lot of stuff happening, but this is a very crucial point yeah. for fantasy football owners Yeah, because you're going into week seven. Most leagues that we have ever been part of, the playoffs are not for everyone, meaning the bottom two, bottom four don't make it, right? right? So week seven is a crucial, crucial week because if you're 0-6, the math, sometimes, depending on your league, if you're 10-man, 12-man, however it's run, this is the or die game. And I've done it. You need, We both have. Yeah, 0-6. We, we have went 0-6, and, yep. and we've won out yep. to make and, the and playoff. the playoffs. So, so this week is critical. Yeah. So I want to talk about how we both managed to go from 0-6 to yeah. playoffs. Yeah. And that's, have, give me a chance. Yeah. Give me a chance. So I know we have some strategies. We'll talk about that throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to ask you, do you know what 35.47 means? 35.47. Yep. I do not. That's how many fancy points I beat you this week. By. Is that what it is? That's why I don't know. Because I, I gave up somewhere around Sunday at 5 p.m., I think, is when I realized I was out and out for the count. <laughs> It was that late game. You know what it was, man? It was that late game. It was a little bit later than five. It was the late game Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs. And I was like, man, there it goes. It's like, there goes all the hands right out the window. They all left right there. Yeah. All right, get back on track. The bye weeks for this week seven. Bills, Eagles, Vikings, Rams. So if you have those in your lineup, make sure you take those players out. Uh, the three best teams in the league. The ba- yeah, yeah, literally. literally. And the Rams. They're, they're, and the Rams. That should have been a great, but yeah. we won't even, we'll even talk about that. Yeah. So a lot of games all throughout we have thursday all the way to monday no london games this week yep um but the going back to the tricks before which i want to talk about kind of now because it's we'll talk about our strategies yeah. for it and then we'll kind of dive into the games the one trick we have done is don't be afraid to trade for sure like just go for it yeah now and not just like small trading like trade your number one draft pick mm-hmm. off trade your second trade your top tier players yeah. get good value back we're talking before we went uh live here you have a top tier running back and you have one win zero wins get rid of him. you don't need jonathan taylor you do not no you do not you don't need eckler you don't need barkley i'm telling you you don't need any of those guys go get yourself a wide receiver or a tight end that can score you 30. yeah that's the key yeah because i'm sorry there's no running back that can get you 30 points right now every single week yeah especially in today's game too you just can't it's 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 like it's such a different Like football year after year is evolving in a much different way. And even, I mean, even when I went 0 and 6 and came back and and was 7 and 6, that was three or four years ago. And I mean, your top 10 running backs were still your workhorses. And I was in the position where I was like, great, I'm going to trade my first round pick, who I think was a wide receiver at that point. Mm -hmm. It might have been DeAndre Hopkins, even. um, And traded him out for like three or four guys. Right. And got those but three or four guys and plugged them in but immediately and immediately started to win. So that's that's the difference is if you are if you're at if you're at the top bunch, you're mm-hmm. looking to trade away your depth mm-hmm. for a stud player. Yeah. But typically if you have one loss, two losses, you could afford to get rid of your depth right now. Yeah. 
Where if you only have one win yeah. or no wins, you just give me players. Yeah. I need players. Yeah. Make the trade. Don't yeah. be afraid to trade. It will save your season. Yeah, and even if you're five and one, don't be afraid to trade. I mean, on the other side of that coin, like if you're five and one and you're like, man, I really need that one piece. Yeah, and don't, I think don't get I can comfortable. ride this out. Don't get comfortable. Get rid of some of your deaf guys. Yep. I mean, may, take the risk now because you're not going to have, you only have maybe another two or three weeks to take the right. risks anyway. Injuries are starting to happen. Mm-hmm. Guys are starting to come back. We're starting mm-hmm. to see how this, how the second half of this league is going to go, um, or the season is going to go. And I think like, so if you're if you're five and one, also don't be afraid to trade. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But if you're if you're zero and six, if you're you know two and four, you need, I'm two you and need four, to. You need to get. You need to start making. Moves. You need to. You're at a point where you have to. Now, if you're oh, if you're two and four because you've had Hopkins sitting on your bench, or because like. No need to panic. No need to panic. If if you're lying in wait, you're For okay. Sure. You're yeah. gonna be fine. For sure. It's still early in the season, but it is the most crucial week this week. Yeah. For teams that have no wins or one win. Yeah. Because this is it's a must. You have to win this week. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the, all the games right now. With that in mind yeah. for this video of maybe, hey, maybe go after this person yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go for them now. So let's. one of those guys, in my opinion, is their Thursday night game. You have Saints at the Cardinals. D-Hop is coming back. Yeah. He's a person. Listen, if you only, if you have no wins right now, take the risk. Yeah. Take the risk. Yeah. Whoever has Hopkins probably either is about a 500 team, I'm assuming, because they took Hopkins or probably. Better. Or better. They do, they're they winning or, without him. Or they're winning without him. Yeah. That's, that's the chances, yeah. right? So if you go to that team with your first overall pick or your second round pick for D-Hop just straight up, take the risk. Honestly, take the too, risk. I, I can argue that you could look at that person – if you if you're in a position where you have Jonathan Taylor or Austin Eckler and you're you're suffering from chronic loss syndrome, mm-hmm. then I <laughs> absolutely think you can go and be like, "Great man, I've got Eckler. Give me D Hop and somebody else. Give yeah. me an insurance and policy. somebody, yeah." Because like Hopkins hasn't played, mm-hmm. it's fair to be skeptical mm-hmm. about how he's going to play when he comes back. Also, can he stay healthy now that right. he's he hasn't you know actually played an NFL game for over a year, almost a year? Mm-hmm. So. You know, it's it's fair to be like, hey, cool, like you know, I'll I'll give you Eckler and somebody, you know, just to break it even, and you give me some, you know, you give me D Hop and some depth, right. and some good depth, some startable depth, and it's gonna turn your season around. Also, and I've I've been saying it over and over again, and I think he sort of had to choose his own fate now because of everything going on in Carolina. But Robbie Anderson is a Cardinal, and anyone who can get deep for the Cardinals will succeed. Um, and Robbie Anderson is a guy who's not going to be very expensive because he's like 85th. Nope. He's ranked 85th right now, but nope. he hasn't had an offense that suited him, and we saw that frustration boil over on Sunday. Yeah, and uh, Brown's down as well. Yeah, um, they're saying potential season ending. What's going to what that in my head that means is our fantasy world, your fantasy world. He's done. He's done. He yeah. might come back for the Cardinals playoffs, which yeah. means all of our playoffs are done. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. In my mind, I'm not even thinking about him. What I'm yeah. thinking about is the guys that are becoming next man up yeah. mentality. Yeah. So, do you see anything for this game, or do you think high scoring? Do you think the Saints is the Saints gonna like high scoring, meaning not the Cardinals, the Saints, or do you think this is the week that listen Hopkins is back, we're the Cardinals again. Let's let's go and play. Yeah, I mean, I my original when I was going through earlier and trying to figure out what my bold predictions were going to be like, I wanted to immediately put Kyler Murray back at number one. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted to say he's back. He's a hundred percent. You know, he's going to have Hopkins back, which he's going to love. He might have Connor back, which he's going to love. He's going to have right. Robbie Anderson, which he's going to love. Um, I I think that it's going to be like maybe like a 21-17 type game. I don't okay. think it's going to be super high scoring. I think I think the Cardinals will be productive. Okay, that's fair. You know? That's fair. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see. I, I like D-Hop. I like watching him. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what that game has. I think it's actually going to be an exciting Thursday night. Football. I think so, too. The last yeah, couple weeks have been rough. I've been, I've been, I do, we do ripping ships on Thursday, yeah. as you know, with all our sport cards, and it's been the more exciting thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> C- uh, compared to the games, it's been yeah, horrible. It, it's been a string of horrible. Games. And even that twelve-seven Commanders Bears game, like, didn't do any Just, help for them. But no. I think the Cardinals, Hopkins back, the Saints are like, you know, they're high-scoring teams still, mm-hmm. no matter what's going on with them. So I don't know. I think you're looking at a good matchup. You're looking at also a lot of. You're looking at an injury prone matchup. Right. Um, but I think I think we're in for something exciting. I think so too. Let's jump into Sunday. Sundays we got the one o'clock, mm-hmm. the four o'clock, and the night game. So we'll start with the ones. Um Pitts finally got in. He did. Falcons versus Bengals. Bengals are 
pretty a pretty big uh, dogs uh, top dogs here, I should say negative six. Yeah, Bengals are. Um, you, I don't see anything fancy here though. I just have you know will, will Pitts continue? Do you, can you trust them again? Is this was it just a fluke? I mean, here's the thing with the Bucks losing to the Steelers the other day. This and and the Panthers all but giving up. Hmm. Um, and hmm. the Saints facing the injuries that they're facing. This is really anybody's division. It really is. The Panthers could still somehow pull it off. Will they? Probably not. But That's can they? They can. Absolutely. So as from what we're seeing out of the Bucks, this is really anybody's division. It really is. So I, I would argue that the Falcons need to win every game that is close for them to win, which this would be one of those. Yeah. This would be one of those games. Which means they're going to have to start consistently utilizing London and Pitts. Yep. In efficient ways, and I think Patterson not being in there hurts them a I lot. So. Yeah. I think they had, they thought they had a couple of running backs that could replace it, yeah. and I don't think so. Yeah. But Patterson has another week or two on the IR, and then he could come back. Will he? It's on. We're unsure. Yeah. But I think once he gets injected back into that offense, we'll start seeing some things happen. Yeah. So speaking of seeing some things happen here, the Lions are off their bye. They're going to be hot. Got. St. Brown, a guy that I would be trying to trade for yeah. in the worst way, going back to yeah. um, what we talked about earlier, but not being afraid to trade. Try to trade for Brown. Um, Switz should be back, which is interesting. Yeah. And then Dak. Dak said he's trying to get back. Now, I don't know if, I don't know whose decision is that's going to allow him to play. Is it him? Is it their coach? Listen, is it Jerry? Who's responsible, we're saying, who our quarterback What I'll is. say about this is um, Cooper Rush was winning. Mm-hmm. And Dak's hand was hurting. Mm-hmm. Cooper Rush didn't win, and all of a sudden Dak might be able to play. Well, we were talking about a couple of weeks where yeah. it's just let him play until he loses type of deal. So I think I think we've sort of reached that point where now they're like, oh no, we don't know if he's gonna play, and I think they know he's gonna play. Now, do you risk? Let's let's say Dak plays mm-hmm. and he loses. Yeah. What do you do? I don't know. At that point, like I think you just have to keep going with Dak. Yeah. You're in because you can hide. You can you can almost hide anything mm-hmm. in the fact that the NFC East is the best division in football. I guess so. Like you know, if you have a rough couple games, you can be like, oh man, you know, it's been a real tough year out there. You mm-hmm. know, um, and you know, the, the loss kicks off with the Eagles' loss. Right. So you could sort of like, you could I sort guess. of you could sort of hide it in your division a little bit. So out of this game, do you think the Lions' ability to score a ton of points wins the game, or do you think? The Cowboys' defense. I think the Cowboys' defense is probably going to win the game. Do you? Yeah, I they're think, negative and, seven and for when, um, the early on. When I say that too, like I, I think that this is going to be another very high-scoring game Do for the Lions. For the yeah. Lions. Yeah. So, yeah. so you think, wow, so you think Cowboys think could have like a 38, 35. Interesting. I think the Cowboys defense wins, but I think they win on mistakes. Like okay. I think it's turnovers. Okay. I think it's an over-eager Lions team that like Diggs is going to be able to, you know, pop a couple interceptions gotcha. off of, which I don't think even think he has one this year, if I'm not mistaken. So the, uh, the Cowboys offensively may not have long drives, might have a lot of Short field goal advantages, get some quick points up on the board. Yeah, interesting for sure. So a potential, I mean, I would say no, 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 there's no cowboy player that's expensive for the daily fantasy world. Yeah, at all. Yeah. Um. So we could see a shootout. And that's that's the other thing. I mean, if you're a if you're a CD Lamb owner, which I am, mm. um, <laughs> if Dak comes back and they have a rough game, panic. Probably. Yeah. Like that's like probably my barometer of like, oh, Dak's back. And if he gets like five points, I'm going to be like, uh oh. Uh oh. You know? So, Even with that. Yeah. yeah. Just, but watch his targets though. For sure. Even though Dak's back, I would I would do two weeks in a panic yeah, because that's fair. there's going to be some rust. That's fair. You know? So mm-hmm. maybe not panic right away. Don't panic at the halftime. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Definitely don't panic at halftime. <laughs> Colts and Titans. Now, this is interesting. Are, are we seeing the the true Colts? Yeah, I think so. Um, another, th- I want to comment I want to make before I hand off. <laughs> For a hand it off to you, yeah, the handcuff here is uh, Jackson for JT all day long. So if I am, listen, if you own both of them, if you have JT and Jackson, what yeah. you might, yeah, you might, you might have foreseen this coming where yeah. he's not playing, and I'm gonna go pick up the backup, trade both of them away, trade both of them away. I think so. And go get a top tier yeah. wideout, a top. T- if you can get Kelsey and Andrews right now. Honestly, I would be taking that. Honestly, too, I mean, it's, I'd be taking that. It, it really behooves you to trade them away to the same person. 
That's what I mean. You yeah, know? Like, for sure. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't sure. even like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and parse things out. I wouldn't no. try and hold one and be like, well, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna no. try and double win this trade. Here's two. Here's the give both. me one. Yeah, absolutely. Easy I think all that's day. 100% the way to go. And I'm telling you, there's gonna be teams out there that are running back heavy, wide receiver heavy, yeah. or tight end heavy. Yeah, they just are. Yeah. Find them in your league yep. and go for it. Don't be afraid to do it for sure. Do you see anything fancy happen? Do you think the Titans slow them down? The Titans are what coming off their bye week. I'm pretty confident they are. Yeah, the Titans are coming off their bye week. I have the Titans winning here even okay. though the Colts are figuring it out again I think it's just going to be like another one of those games where it's a division game mm -hmm. Titans are coming off of a bye week they're going to be fired up um, I think they're just going to come out and, and, and do the thing mm -hmm. um, but I don't I don't see anything really fancy here I do um, I do think if the Colts win this game we might have to be taught we might have to get the Colts more credit that's than, fair where they were pop they were real hot coming into the season yeah Super Bowl favorites, even you can argue that too. Yeah. So, so if they, they win this, they'll, they'll be four, two, and one. Yeah. So definitely gonna need some uh, respect there for the Colts. Next, Next game, game, speaking about respect, Packers versus Washington. This, in my opinion, is a must-win game. Yeah. For Rodgers. Yeah, I think if the Packers lose, like stick a fork in them. Like I think it's, I think, I think it's over for them. No, I have been saying in a lot of my videos here on YouTube that I believe Vikings are the best in that division. Hundred percent. Followed by the Lions yep. and then the Packers. Yep. So realistically, they don't win this game. That could be very, very true. Even though they have a better record than Lions. We're only week seven. It's one of those things, right, where, like, the stars, again, are aligning for the Packers to win. Mm -hmm. um, no Carson Wentz. five and a half. Yeah, no, no Carson Wentz. Wentz. They're favorited. Um, I I have them winning because mm -hmm. I can't imagine them losing. You know what's funny? We talked about them losing to top-tier teams week after week. Yeah. Lost to, what, the Jets last week? Lost to the Giants and the and Jets. the Giants. Yeah. These are historically, I'm sorry, bottom – Barrel teams. The, the last, cu last couple last years. Last couple years, yeah. yeah. Giants won I was, Super Bowls. I, say, I get that. Yeah, the Giants. The last couple years. The Giants and Jets have definitely had a rough couple years. And the Giants. And, and the Washington did, too. Yeah, Washington has, too. For sure. So you're going to lose three in a row to these? I think that. And the thing with the Giants and Jets is that, like, they've now looked like they've turned it around. 100%. Both of those teams are now on a completely 100%. different track. The Giants went out and changed their coaching staff. Mm -hmm. All of the young bucks, all of the rookies on the Jets are playing like they've been in the NFL for 10 years. Yep. So those teams are finally turning it around. It it you know if you're the Packers or a Packers fan, it does suck to be the experiment that proves those hypotheses 100%. true. Um, but I don't know. I I have the Packers winning just because I think they need to, and I I don't think they I don't think can Heineke beat them. Yeah, he's he's a formidable backup for sure. Um. Do I think it'll happen? No. Does that mean it probably will? Yes. You know? I think the wide, the rookie wide receivers for Packers have to step up. Yeah. They have to start making the plays. Rodgers, give him credit. He's putting the ball where it needs to he go. Is. It's just the plays aren't getting finalized. They're yeah. just not. They're not getting completed. Yeah. So a lot of disconnect um, over in Green Bay there. Yeah. Um, speak about another disconnect, two of these teams, the Buccaneers and the Panthers. Yeah. Man, you, ha you have... It seems like there's a lot of locker room talk coming out with the Buccaneers where Brady's yeah. just getting – he's getting the veteran treatment, but, like – A little too much. A little too much. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot of that. And you can see it in the game in each, each week. They're just not a Brady-led team. They're yeah. just not. It's weird. Then the other side of the ball, <laughs> Panthers, you have guys throwing fits mid-game and then getting traded not even 24 hours yeah. later. Yeah. Just absolutely insane to um, – Two teams right now that I don't think have control of no, their team at all. I don't think so either. And I, I, again, I have the Bucks here only because of the the true situation that the Panthers are in, where I think the Panthers organization right now is in absolute shambles. Horrible. I don't think the Bucks are in shambles. I just think that Brady lost the team. Yeah. And uh, for, for the record, Buccaneers are the highest spread of the week, negative 11. So, like, that's probably the safest one. I see Fournette having a big game. You know, and... they, they were 10 and a half on the Steelers. Are they really? Yeah. They were 10 and a really? half point favorites on the Steelers. And they and were, rightfully right. so. I mean, yeah. and, you know, again, I, I, I think I, I don't remember if I mentioned it on air or off air, but they were facing the practice squad yep. for the Steelers secondary. Yep. And Brady's never lost to a rookie. And he's never lost to a rookie. Now, Pickett played half the game. 
You got so hurt. Technically, I technically, wonder how they, I wonder like, how they uh, marked that up in the books. Technically, like he lost to Trubisky, yeah, I yeah, think. I guess. Yeah. Um, so I don't By know. How, game. Yeah, I don't know how to like really parse that out 100 percent or how the NFL the will choose to will parse be an that. Asterisk. There yeah, will 100 yeah. percent, but uh, <laughs> but he lost to he lost to a practice squad and and a practice squad that was ready to beat him a def- a, a very injured defense that was ready to beat him. Um, so I don't know. I got the bucks here just on the fact that like, I think the Panthers are in a way worse position. And I think this is probably the last week that CMC is a Panther. Probably. Uh, he, I know. I think he actually wants out too. I can't imagine. I, I he think does. who, he what, who would in his situation. Yeah. Um, here's the question though. Who would take him? Who would take him? Now, I'll, now here's the thing. Every year this happens. There is a top tier skilled player that is going to get traded. It's always the top tier teams though that yeah. go for him. Why? I think it's that final i think the the level between really good nfl teams and mm-hmm. really bad nfl teams is starting to widen out a little bit and we're getting to a point where like the top like 10 teams in football are incredible mm-hmm. they're really good mm-hmm. um but what what but why make why make the good better why well, if you have if you have cmc they're right willing to pay but it's all first round picks that are going to be late picks yeah you why know, not why not trade for a team that's like 500 it, right it is all late pick guys but here's what i'll say about that is that if you have you know this kind of worked with the giants it's kind of worked with the jets and the falcons a little bit even too when you have you're going to get your own second, for sure. third fourth round for pick, sure. and then you're going to swing back around 2021 20, 22 23 mm-hmm. you're going to get another one and then you're going to get into the second and third round, and you're going to have that sort of same thing happen again. So you're collecting a lot of talent in those first couple You are, you are 100% collecting talent. So I, I don't know. I think that, like, I think the rich getting richer in the NFL mm-hmm. is, I think the really good teams in the NFL have mm-hmm. massive buying power. It's interesting. Yeah. I The way I see it, I would go to, like, a bottom team. Like, and, and just, like, a team that is going to maybe miss playoffs already. And yeah. it's, like, very clear. Yeah. Like Washington, yeah, yeah. Hey, I think, hey, 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 Washington, give me Gibson. Yeah, give me your first round pick, and take CMC. Yeah, could have Carson once. He's not a bad quarterback. He, he showed some promise the last couple of weeks. Yeah, why not go to a bottom team? I think it's one of those things too, where like you have to like consider. They might be. For all we know, they're that's going. Tr- that's they're, true. For all we know, we, we have no for idea. all we know, they're going to the Commanders and they're looking at the Bills, being like, "Yo, these guys will give me this. What are you going to give me?" Right. You know, just like because I think it's, it's just interesting. The market, you know, because, why, why like, go to the Eagles and say, "Yeah, sure, you, give me, give me Sanders and a couple of your first round picks. Take CMC." And if that's the but, case, if that's the trade, mm-hmm. yikes! Well, of wow. course, of wow. course. Wow. Same with the Bills. Yeah. Bills are trying to get them too, yeah. but like. The the the, 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 the picks you're gonna get back, they're not gonna be a top quarterback, not gonna be top skill player. They're gonna be your big boys up front, your yeah. defensive players, which you definitely need. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but boy, I would be going to these bottom teams, knocking on their door. Hey, you want CMC? Like, oh yeah, oh boy, and we have because the thing about we have a chance now to make playoffs. True. Right? Yeah, I mean, if chance. you're a fringe team, if you're we, like, we, if we you're... have a we have a chance. Oh boy, we have a chance. Yeah, just give up our first pick. If you're the Falcons, like think about that. You know, like if you're the Falcons and you're like, you know what, like our team's not as bad as we thought it was gonna be. Let's that. just like go out and get CMC. Like I can see that. If you're the Bra- if you're the Packers and you're like, oh, we need someone who's like a vet. Let's go out and get CMC. Right. I don't know what other team like would do it because I think like when you look at long term too, like you have to consider that like McCaffrey's not going to resign with the Commanders. No, McCaffrey well, might resign well, with the Jets. He he might though. You never know. I don't know. I, you I never think, know. I think it's got to be easy division. Team, like easy division. Yeah, yeah, the easiest. It is. Yeah. It, is. Yeah. it is. This year, this year's a fluke. I'm an Eagle fan. I can say that. All right. I think. I don't know. I think. I think that division only gets harder. And you do. I do, man. I think that division is going to be so tough to come out of. And that's that's another thing. Like, you got to You got to go make to the sure Raiders. Like, go to the Raiders. I'm cutting you off. I'm like looking. I'm I like think, I, I, I'm scrolling here. And I'm like, oh, how about the, the, how about the Raiders? Raiders? Is one. Give me, give me, yeah. give me Josh Jacobs in a first round. I don't round even pick. think I would get rid of Josh Jacobs. I would, like, I would try and get rid of almost anybody else. Anyone else? Many picks as possible. Derek Carr, you have you Adams have and CMC. Josh Jacobs. And, CMC like, in the back. and if but I'm the Raiders, I'm like, listen, it. yeah, we might not win this year, but like next year we're loaded. Yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah, I I could definitely I see fringe teams definitely like making a run and making it happen. Like even like the Dolphins, the Dolphins are scary with CMC. No hate to Mostert, no hate to Edmonds, and they paid Edmonds. So like again, I know it's like another right. factor into it, but I don't know. You like put them on one of those rosters, and they're dangerous. 
and the Dolphins immediately become dangerous. That's, I'm an Eagle fan. I would yeah. love to see him an Eagle. Yeah. Don't run. I think I, you might. But I want to see him in a bottom team and then make that team great. Yeah, and and we just, talk about a basketball time like these smaller markets yeah. getting a stud, and it's like that's awesome, you know. Yeah. It's like I want to just want to see it. It's, I don't know. I'm a I'm a fan of that. It's one of those things too, where like you know, another thing to think of is back to sort of our like trading and fantasy. CMC is probably spending his last week as a Panther. Yeah. I think it's hundred percent happening. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. But who else do you get rid of? Because like whoever comes is mm-hmm. gonna have a really uphill battle. For sure. Will Terry's gonna have an uphill battle. For Sanders sure. is gonna have an uphill battle. I and would be straight. trading away all my running backs. I would, yeah. I would, give, I, give my wider I would definitely trade away almost anybody that I could. All right, let's, let's keep this moving. moving. Giants and Jaguars. First off, we talked about our. So you already have the answer. Yeah. We'll give we'll give you a quick second. Who's the underdog? Who's the over? Go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Giants are the dog. Can't believe it. Can't Giants believe it. are the dogs. Can't believe it. Jaguars are favored by three. Can't believe it. I'm sorry. I don't agree with that at nah, all. Nah. At all. Um, I think Dimes going to have a big week. I think I think a lot of Giants players are going to have big weeks. Uh, big week this week yeah. for week seven. I, I just, I'm, I'm kind of in awe by it. There's no, I, I, Giants are five and one. Giants are five good and wins. one. And um, Wondell Robinson came back. And Wondell Robinson looks good. It's crazy. So. It's crazy. That's a, we, we, I know we're kind of long on time. We would talk about a lot of other stuff. So let's. Do you have anything else to say about that? Game? I don't uh, get Wanda Robinson. Get Robinson. Yeah, just get Robinson. I mean, Fair. like I think if you're gonna be like, hey, cool, I want Jonathan. I'm gonna trade away Jonathan mm-hmm. Taylor for a wide receiver one. Mm-hmm. See if the guy will throw Wanda Robinson in. Here's a one last take about the trading. I would trade away a lot of players and then try to trade for Ingram. Trade, yeah. For a tight end, he's getting a lot of targets. I think he's the only Jacksonville player. He's getting a lot right of now. targets. I don't think so he's Robinson anymore. If you have like a top tier tight end in your le- on your team and you have Ingram as a backup mm. and you need a win, trade a tight end, get some wide receivers, and put Ingram in. Yep. All right, let's keep it moving. Browns and Ravens. Browns bounce. I can't believe to say the Browns bounce back. They're always in the bottom, but they're doing good. Yeah. I know they only have two wins, but. They're giving teams a lot of st- trouble. Yeah, they that are. run that run uh, offense. They should have two more wins. They just can't close. Um, right. I don't know. I think the thing like I have the Ravens winning this game. Mm-hmm. Um, Negative six and a half for the Ravens. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. It's with one of those things where it's it's again it's a division matchup to me. It's nothing fancy. Lamar is Lamar. Um, Does Lamar hurt the Ravens? You know I can't figure that out one hundred percent. Does Lamar hurt? You sort of posed Ravens? that question to me earlier, and it's been I stuck did. in my head. I, and I, I don't know. Question, I don't know for it? sure. I, I can't Does like he make that team better. Lamar, I'm just like that. that I'm gonna let. I'm gonna. I'm just that like that voice. Yeah, that just keeps popping in. I said last week, like Lamar finally got the respect for me. Like I finally am like, gonna like back off on the running back as a quarterback thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're three and three only. But they're three and three, and like I don't know if you if you stick someone else back there. I don't know. Are they a better team? But I also don't know, like, they're outside of Andrews. Duvernay's mm-hmm. good. He's, he's rising. Mm-hmm. I totally get that. He's also a returner, so he's got way more fantasy value than, than some. Way more. But, um, but I also think, like, you know, if you took DeAndre Hopkins and put him on that team, mm-hmm. they're probably undefeated. Or does he run the ball? I don't, I don't know. know. I think it's both. Because, like, look at, I mean, look at Murray. I mean, Murray runs, and then when he finds... It's a yeah. different kind of run when you know that someone like him is down there. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. So <laughs> if you put Joe Burrow on the Ravens, they better or worse? I'm going to say if you put Joe Burrow on the Ravens and you put Lamar Jackets on Lamar Jackson on the Bengals, both of those teams probably only have one loss. One at once. So yeah. It's I think better. they're both better. It's better. I think both teams would be better if so that was the case. respectively, Lamar is hurting the Ravens. Probably. And this, this is, is interesting. I think if you stack it's it up against another quarterback like that caliber, it's totally different. Like if you it's put, more of a passing, like if you switched, that could run, but passing. If you switch Lamar and Allen, yeah, the Bills are worse, and the Ravens are better. Okay, just because a better quarterback, or yeah, I think because I think if you put Lamar on the Bills, I don't think that he can do what Allen's what doing. Allen's throwing the ball. I think if you put Lamar on the Bengals, he can do mm-hmm. what he's doing. And I think if you put it's Lamar in Miami, he could do what Tua was going to do. It's a, certain certain situations, for so, sure. It's definitely hard. I, I, I definitely, there's definitely merit to that because, like, they're three and three. Yeah, right. I think we'll know in six weeks. For sure. I think they're a team that you have to really prepare for each week. Yeah. Um, Jets, Broncos. Oh, boy. This, could this be Wilson versus Wilson? Not sure. Russ is hurt. Um, it's just... 
Broncos really messed up, I think. I think so, too. And I, I think they I, did. I think the Jets are playing out of their minds right they now. They are. I think they win this game. I think they win this game. Another game that Denver is favored by yeah. two. Yeah. But I just think – I don't think anyone could actually give Jets – Reddit. Yeah, it's the Jets. And the Jets. I'm sorry, it's the Jets. The Jets running back situation are deadly. Is yeah, it's deadly, and it's one of those things that like you know you can 100 percent lean on if you're going to trade running backs. You can start yeah. Brees Hall as a as a running back one and be fine. Even Carter. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. even even Carter. Yeah. So there's those, those are guys. Um, I would be settling for yeah. to go get a wide receiver. Yeah. Okay, I'd be afraid for all Broncos. Um, players also yeah 100 russ at the helm yeah texans raiders both are off their bye we are in the four o'clock games actually the jets and the jets and the broncos are the start of the four o'clock games um texans raiders are the second game both teams only have one win coming off their bye who moves on to two wins are we gonna get ties <laughs> to note that we don't not get us two win honestly like i could see a tie happening here i'm gonna give it to the raiders only because i think the raiders coming off of the bye I know they're both coming off of the bye, but I think the Raiders coming off of the bye after that frustrating loss. They need to they win, need too. They need to win. I think the Texans are um, <laughs> not okay with losing, but I think they have, I don't they have, think they have, a, I don't think they have as much to prove. Pressure. They're not yeah. much pressure with yeah. Texans. They're just being real about it. Great team. I think I like all the – I like I like Mills. I like Pierce. They have a couple of wideouts I like. I like the team. They just need to, they just need to continue to improve. Yeah. Watching, watching those games, games is not, I'm not frustrated. Yeah. You know, I watch them. It's like, oh, this is actually good football. Yeah. But they just, they're just not there yet. Yeah. And, then, you know, getting rid of the hop. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? All right. Next game, 430 Seahawks versus Chargers. This is an interesting game. Uh, I don't even know what to think about this game. Like, Seahawks are three and three. Chargers are four and two. Chargers have potentially getting Allen back. They're scoring a lot of points. Herbert's doing great. Then he got got Geno on the other side of the ball for the Seahawks scoring a ton of points each game. DK showing up. Like my mind is all over the place here. Yeah, it's a really good wide receiver matchup. It's also like a decent running back matchup. Um it's a good quarterback matchup too. I mean Geno's throwing. Like he's he's he's, he's doing great. So um I don't know. I have the Chargers taking this one. Six and a half. I'm, I'm also going to say here that um, if you're trading Jonathan Taylor, I like Mike Williams. I'm a Mike Williams owner. I mm-hmm. love Keenan Allen. Mm-hmm. I would have been a Keenan Allen owner if my draft went differently. Um, I don't know that I would trade running backs for either one of those particular guys. That's interesting. I'd be a little afraid of what the rest of their year looks like, um, especially together. Mike Williams is pretty streaky, mm-hmm. so I don't know that I would offload. You need you need pure wide receiver ones. You do. So these guys have wide receiver one potential, yeah. but they're more wide receiver twos. Yeah. You need if you're trading a running back, go after the wide receiver ones. You need a Look guy who's rankings, clear ahead of the pack. Just yeah. guys that can score you thirty. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. Yeah, you, need you need Hill. You need Hopkins. You need guys like that. You need yes. Um, Chiefs and Niners. Um, Debo's there, right? I don't, I wouldn't be trained for Debo. I wouldn't be trained any of the 49ers guys. Nope. Um, Chiefs, it's only Kittle. Yeah. If you're training for a tight end, it's Kittle or Mark Andrews. Um, what do you think here? Do you think I, – I, I think Mahomes struggles here. I think he's going to be dominant, don't get me wrong, but the Niners are just – I think they're tough. Yeah, the Niners, I think they're tough. the Niners are a tough team, but they, um, they just lost to the Falcons. I know it's just so, but a lot of their, the way I see it, the 49ers with Jimmy, a lot of their skilled guys got more involved last they did. week. Yeah. So for me, it's like cool. Chiefs allow a lot of points. They just do. Mm-hmm. I could see it's being a tough game. I could a, t- a tough. The, listen, the Lions only negative three Chiefs. Yeah, I'm I'm going with that. I'm going with the Chiefs. I'm actually mm-hmm. going to go with them to cover two. I think that. Um, I don't know. I. The Niners are a good team. Mm-hmm. It's just the Falcons were able to prove something against the Niners. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the Niners 100% bounce back from that. If you are in the trading mood, also look for Kittle. He's getting more and more involved he is. Yeah. Um, throughout. Look at what I do is I look for players and their targets. Yeah. Look at the targets for Kittle. He's getting up there. And if you're going to trade for, if you're trying to trade, if you need a tight end you're trading for, um, a tight end, get Kittle now mm. before he takes off. Also, look at target to snap count ratio, too. Yes, exactly. You know? All little little tricks that we have used to get from zero wins yeah. to playoffs. Yep. 
the Sunday night game, your boy Steelers going against the Fish. Yeah, man. In Miami, negative seven Miami is. Yeah. I'll let you take this. Going with the line. Going with the Dolphins are going to win. Dolphins are going to cover. Um, Tua possibly back. I think mm-hmm. that team is going to absolutely step back into the form that it was in when Tua got hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully. I like hope Tua is okay. I, mm-hmm. hope, I hope he is seamlessly fine. I do too. Steelers are facing a lot of injuries still. I think Kenny Pickett. Um, if he's able to come out of concussion protocol, which I believe he is, um, I think they'll play a good game. Um, Steelers are also a little disjointed. Deontay Johnson and Mitch Trubisky got into it after the game, mm-hmm. um, even though they won. Um, so okay. we're facing, you know, while the Bucks were disjointed against the practice squad secondary, mm-hmm. um, I've seen two absolutely dice up vulnerable defenses. Um, I've also seen Mostert dice up vulnerable right. defenses and Hill dice up multiple uh, vulnerable defenses. So I think the Dolphins take this game. Um, I think that Hill is a guy that you want to go after and trade for. I think that every Steelers wide receiver you want to get rid of if you can. But I do think that Harris might be a guy that if you're like, hey, do I need a running back if you're in a winning situation or do I want to hang on to this running back because right now he's a flex RB2? Right. I think by the end of the season he'll be an RB1. Yeah, I think he's going to have some potential there. Um, I also want to make a comment for the Dolphins wide receivers. Just get them. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. Just, it doesn't matter what quarterback is in there. Yeah. They're just too fast. They're so. I was talking to a buddy about this throughout the week. They're so fast that as soon as they put their head down and they go for that goal route, the defenders are turning their back and running. Yeah. You have to. They're that fast. Yeah. Well, as soon as they do that, they do a, a quick one, two, three, come back to the ball for a curl or for an out. They're just that wide open that no matter you and I can make those throws. Yeah, they're that fast. You have to respect a deep pass for Waddle or Hill, which leaves the unders just there. So they're gonna have all the catches, ton of catches. So yeah, there was so much talk going into the year about we we didn't know how Tua was gonna throw to them, and and we didn't know which one was gonna mm-hmm. emerge as the top guy. And a lot of drafts. I mean, I was in two or three, and a lot of drafts they both fell. Mm-hmm. And ours they fell a lot. Uh, Hill went. I grabbed Hill. Yeah, two. Second, second, yeah, second, but he's and that's what that was. With, that was with six guys yeah. off the board already, right? You know, yeah, um, that was the um, fourth. He's the fourth best wide receiver right now, yeah. I think. Yeah. Ish, yeah, Ish. so he might be higher than that. No, I, I think he might be four. I think he's four. I think it's Cooper. I think it's Cooper Diggs Jefferson, mm. and then probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm Brown. I think Brown was five. Yeah, before he got hurt. Yep, crazy. Yeah. All right, let's, let's uh, wrap this up. The last game, Monday night game, Bears and Pats. Um. <laughs> I got nothing here, man. Like I, I don't even know what they were thinking when they scheduled this. Well, I think they were thinking that Fields and Mac Jones were going to be healthy, leading their teams to victory each and every week. And we might not see either one of them. Might just see all the backups. Um, Yeah. So I don't know. Um, The NFL scripters really messed some scripts up this week. It's a. It's it's been a rough prime time season. It's been bad. It's been like, bad. It, I would say, like, I'm not even watching some of the games on primetime. Like, oh, I know. Yeah, no. That's why you're doing the box breaks with us. Doing box breaks. On Sunday night, exactly. we have box breaks, exactly. right? We have ripping shits on Thursdays. Exactly. Like, keep it interesting, man. Exactly. That's why. Jay Earth Gaming yeah. has you covered, dude. Exactly. You like how I did that. I do like that. That was a nice little promo. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I don't know. I just, I think I'm looking at this game. I don't know. I can't, I don't think this is going to be that interesting. There's, Outside of Ramondre Stevenson, there's nobody I don't think that you want to trade for on either of these teams. I'm staying away from this team unless I'm – the only thing I'm going for, I'm trading for Justin Field rookie cards and Mac Jones rookie yeah, cards. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. All right, let's get to our hot takes. You got crushed. I did. I went one and three. Last week. Yeah. Close, though. There was, you were close on a couple of them. It was. So let's – this is the part where we kind of go over some bottom guys that are think we're going to outperform top guys. Uh, it's hard to do, obviously. Yeah. Um, a lot of our suggestions and picks are really valued when we go team by team. Mm-hmm. What we do here is we do our best to go after a low person that might score you more points than a more expensive guy for doing DraftKings, fan do stuff like that. So let's start off with the quarterbacks. Who do you got? So this week I'm doing uh Daniel Jones will be a top five I like it. fantasy quarterback. I like that. He's not expensive at all. And listen, they're underdogs. You know everyone in the locker room knows that they're underdogs too. Yeah, they do. They know like wait, they I think they know game. week after week they know they're really yeah. let's we'll show them. Let's we'll yeah. show them up. So love it. Go to your running backs. Running backs. Najee Harris is gonna be a top three running back this week. 
I like that too. Miami is is um they're in turn. They're allowing some points they throughout are. the throughout the last Their couple weeks here. Isn't as uh, brick and mortar as I thought no, it would be. No, and because of the change of quarterback, there is some turnovers too. Yeah. So the offenses are getting some extra possessions there. Mm-hmm. And Steelers with the whole quarterback drama, the wide receiver drama. The only thing stale right now is that running back game. Yeah, so yeah. I like it. All right, wide receivers. All right, so uh, you calm me down a little bit, right? So I was saying DeAndre Hopkins, he's back. He's going to be the best. He's going to be the top scoring yes. wide receiver. We pulled it back a little bit. Uh, uh-huh. Hopkins is going to be a top three there we go. wide receiver in fantasy this week. <laughs> he, I think is you were, but to your point, though, if that happens, we'll give you like major league there points. We go. If yeah. he like yeah. scores the best, yeah. PPR format will go. Um, we'll give we'll give you bonus points. All right, fair uh, We'll, we'll give fair. you bonus That's points. Fair. Okay, tight end, go for it. Uh, Evan Ingram over Zach Ertz, who I feel like has been in my tight end prediction literally every week literally every um, week but we're going ingram over zach Ertz with Ertz. uh he's got hopkins to share with he's got robbie anderson to share with now yep. um, no brown and no brown but um to you know points that you made earlier in the podcast ingram has been getting a lot of targets well, i think at 10 yeah he's yeah, having quite a resurgence week. in jacksonville yeah so so interesting there for sure um listen appreciate you stopping by and it went a little bit longer today but this was an important week so we wanted to talk about some strategies to get you guys out of those one game or no game a little rush you're having there so definitely want to talk to you guys a little bit more appreciate you coming by as always and uh we'll see you what's next time we're gonna see you no wrestling event this week no wrestling event next probably week see you over the weekend yeah. probably see you over the weekend yeah. right all right guys thank you so much for hanging out with us good luck to your fantasy football week seven we'll see you back here next week for week eight take care have a great night